Let's do this. I'm uh, Patch McGinn. I'm here with uh, Professor uh, Franklin Ashley of the Arts Department, a uh, prominent uh, screenwriter. Well, not screenwriter, more prominent play playwriter, but a uh, screenwriting and playwriting teacher here at the College of Charleston. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm, I'm great. I'm just glad to be here with you. Um, I really just wanted to ask you a couple of basic questions because you're such a dynamic figure here in the Arts Department, even though I'm not really... Uh, theater department. Yeah. Theater department. Sorry, not really well versed in the theater department because I've only taken two theater classes right. since I've been here. Yeah. But even even when I wasn't taking theater classes, I still heard about people talking about you. You're in a way, uh, I don't know if you, you you do know Paul Allen, the yeah, yeah the the poet. Yeah, he's that's a, a guy you hear about. Just he's a great person. He is. No, he's he's a tremendous person. But uh, what I really wanted to do today is just find out a little more about what you're about. Um, I just want to know first off, just to start basic, where, where are you from originally? And Yeah, yeah. I grew up in uh, Columbia, South Carolina and I went to Dreher High School there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to Newberry College and I got my MA and PhD from USC and I, uh, I taught at USC Aiken and, and University of South Carolina for about 20 years, and then I came here in 92 uh, to do uh, uh, playwriting. And we added screenwriting, because I taught screenwriting at the University of South Carolina. And the stu screenwriting course that you're in came really, a, came about because of student demand. And, and it was something I loved and I had done, and uh, so we, we made it happen. And what was it that brought you here to College Charleston? I mean, I know you, you said you were at Newberry and you are at USC Aiken. Was it because College Charleston has a reputation as being one of the best art schools, pu public art schools here in the state? Is that the reason why, or is it something else? Indeed, that was part of it, and the fact also that a very good friend of mine, Alex Sanders, came down here as president. And the fact that he was here, uh, combined with that, ambiance of the college, it's a great reputation. It made me really want to come here and Alec mentioned it to me and then I came down for a year temporary appointment and then uh, from there they made it permanent uh, uh, blessedly uh, <laughs> uh, for uh, a lot of uh, a lot of us in the transitory mm -hmm. situation but yeah, they made it permanent, and so then uh, I've been here from 93 till 2009. So. And you've also mentioned once before that you wrote for TV Guide right. for some, some amount of time. What exactly did that entail? Like, what did you, were you a TV critic? or And, and also, how did oh, you... See right over there behind you? Yeah. If you could just pull one of those out, get one of those TV Guides down. You know. Up there on the top shelf. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, pulling down one of the yeah. TV guys, yeah. the World Series edition. Yeah, Very that's nice. right. This is um, I I did this piece on Faye Dunaway, <laughs> um, and it was a for a um, uh, TV movie called Cold Sassy Tree. But what had happened is I had to give you, and you could take this with you and look at it. Just hang on to it. Okay, okay. Because here we go. Uh, I had written for Har Harper's Magazine, and um, back in the seventies, and from that it was so hard to get into Harper's that from that when I got in there, then I got contacted by a lot of other magazines, and. Uh, I started writing a sport magazine, and then I, I did this piece on the um, Masters, which is coming up this weekend, so mm -hmm. this is a, a serendipitous time for us. But I did this piece on the Masters, and they asked me to do, to pick a rookie that had just come to their masters to get a shot at 
at the at the big time. He didn't really stand a chance, but just follow the kid around. And so the kid I chose was Fuzzy Zeller. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was funny. People knew him on the circuit and so on. But the thing that worked out for me was that nobody would talk to Fuzzy Zeller but me because I was following him. And he won the Masters. But, yeah, and but, that was mm. he was as a rookie. <laughs> and that was his rookie year. And so essentially that changed my life. It was a very, it was a great piece of luck. And, and the, every time I finished a piece, after that, TV got to sign me another one. And I just had the combination of understanding film combined with uh, an interest in journalism mm -hmm. and some reputation of being able to deliver. They used to write me and they would say, go up to Nashville and do a piece on Loretta Lynn because she's got a piece on HBO, and I said, oh, okay, what do you want me to do? And they would write the usual Franklin Ashley piece, which I, I have no idea what that is. So I would try to, but it had to do with humor, and it had to do with always coming at things differently, and instead of just Loretta Lynn recorded from 1950, uh, 56 to 1963. She sold 12 gold albums, and they were reissued by RCA, and you understand what I'm saying. It was just to try to get, they would use me to try to get the vitality of the person. And the less I knew about it, the better. So, Sorry. okay. And um, I wanted to touch on, uh, you, I've never really heard you talk about this, but have you ever actually, have you, have you worked on a screenplay that was end up turned into a movie, or is, or is it mainly playwriting that you've actually had published work from you on? Yeah, I mean, all these, uh, all these um, uh, posters here are plays that were performed and published in... Uh, uh, Yes, I have. I was contracted to do uh, Peace, which is an adaptation of a novel. This is not the horror novel. The novel called Halloween, and I worked for a guy named Michael Braun up in Connecticut and New York, and uh, it's really wonderful when you do get these contracts because they, they pay you more then you would make it a whole year if you could ever get it lined up. And that was what I had done, um, uh, and it was option, and it's still in the pile, and it has not been made into a film, and who knows if it ever will be, but it was a professional gig, and it really sort of changed everything for me. And at the same time, I've done a number of screen treatments, and helped people on rewriting and editing and, and um, so that was um, and, and also in juxtaposition I've done uh, all the um, I've written a lot of video and film which has been produced here of both um, videotape and film. Mm -hmm. And I did the uh, all of the TV commercials, wrote and produced all the TV commercials for Dick Riley when he ran for governor. Huh. And I was hired to do that. And they, uh, the thing there is that we were started at 3% of the vote, you can see up there. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, we stood no chance, we ended up winning the governorship. So that changed my life too because I somehow got a reputation which is undeserved of being able to pull something off and and uh, um, I'm still have gotten jobs doing com writing commercials and so on but all of this is sort of connected all the way you know whether it's screenwriting or well, postscript. I think that's that's all the bases right there, right. and I really do appreciate it, and it's been very, very interesting uh, talking to you briefly about all you've done for the college and all you've done in your life, so thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot.